So what would you say were some of your favorite German philosophers, let's say, growing up? Um, when I grew up, I, I think it was, uh, I think it was Kant. I really enjoyed Kant. And uh, I'm not sure to which degree Kant has actually influenced uh, the thinking of modern cognitive scientists. I do think that Kant was a cognitive scientist, but uh, his writing is abysmal. If you uh, read him uh, in German, uh, Basically, you notice that he's writing like a bad coder. It's spaghetti code. There are very few uh, useful comments in his code. He just pushes all the insights that were necessary for him into this language and uh, adds it into longer and longer sentences. And very few people were able to actually parse this in the right way. And this uh, turned Kant into the Nostradamus of cognitive science. That is, uh, he makes all these enormous prophecies and uh, these prophecies are correct, but only in hindsight. So uh, <laughs> once you have uh, some understanding of a, a domain, you can go back to Kant and uh, pinpoint where he figured it out or most of it out. But uh, I'm not aware of that much work where uh, somebody read Kant as a student and then sat down and uh, wrote some uh, computational model or uh, uh, developed a paradigm in cognitive science uh, that uh, moved uh, them along. Instead, in uh, philosophy, it has created a few uh, communities of people that do Kant exegesis from different perspectives. And the people that uh, invest into uh, reading Kant uh, typically don't get to the point where they uh, become uh, neo Kantians and uh, insert themselves into the current discourse as Kantians, but rather it's, uh, it becomes an insular thing where they are a part of a, a certain Kant school and have invested most of their theory into a particular kind of interpretation of uh, a particular thinker. So uh, I really think that uh, like Wittgenstein, and uh, it's, who has done a lot of harm to philosophy because philosophers who didn't understand what computers were, which um, Wittgenstein understood before Turing apparently, and uh, before they existed, which is, is a really big thing, right? Uh, you can understand Turing uh, and uh, Wittgenstein, once you understand all these ideas of a computer. But before you do, and uh, especially when you uh, try not to, uh, to understand them and stay out of all this weird discourse that these nerds are having over there, um, you are uh, bound to uh, interpret this in the wrong way. And uh, so it uh, led to this uh, linguistic turn in philosophy and ordinary language philosophy and so on. I think that have harmed the field. And uh, similar things might have happened with Kant. But uh, the good thing with Kant is that he seems to be less accessible on the surface than uh, Wittgenstein, so he hasn't uh, been doing that much harm. People couldn't, just could not read him. Yeah. <laughs> I also uh, like uh, um, Spinoza. Not, I don't think that he qualifies as a German philosopher. Uh, I think that uh, Leibniz is, is great but he's so full of himself. It made him uh, quite inaccessible to me when he was younger. I liked uh, the uh, um, Maverick, like La Mettrie better. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, La Mettrie's thinking is not that uh, deep in a way, but it's correct. And he was willing to go against the authorities. And uh, this is something that I, I like about him. And uh, people still see him as the fool today, even though his thinking has prevailed. Um, Hannah Arendt is great. Okay. 